The majority of recently hospitalized coronavirus patients in New York are people who have followed the precaution of staying home, Governor Cuomo said Wednesday. The governor said it was shocking that 66% of new coronavirus hospitalizations are people who are either retired or unemployed and not commuting to work on a regular basis. The statistics comes from a preliminary survey of 113 hospitals done over three days that included 1,269 responses at the state's six more information about how COVID-19 spreads. According to the data, 18% of new cases came from nursing homes, 4% from assisted living facilities, 2% from congregate care facilities, and 2% were homeless, less than 1% from prisons, and 8% were marked as orders. And joining us from New York is lawyer Olu Osha. Thank you, Mr. Olu, for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All eyes okay. are on America to chronicle lessons learned as regards how to or not to handle the pandemic. What clear mistakes or underestimations have produced the high figures we're seeing in terms of infections and deaths in the country has advanced as America? Well, um, of course, as you know, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Just go ahead. I can hear you, please. Well, okay. Well, of course, as you know, uh, the coronavirus is a novel virus. So um, it's never uh, a disease like it has never uh, affected, uh, it has never been visited on mankind before. And so um, we're learning as we go along. Um, and so that's part of what it is. So there's no vaccine, there's no treatment for it. So uh, we're just learning as we go along. But that uh, with that being said, um, we did have ample time to actually respond since it, uh, its outbreak in Wuhan, China in the winter of 2019. Um, well, there are indications that there was U.S. intelligence that, um, that, that showed that there was a pandemic that was good. That, that it was an epidemic when it was confined to China and it was going to come out and it was going to impact the U.S. So, um, the United States president, uh, Donald Trump, was, of course, lethargic in acting, and um, he did nothing. Uh, I guess he underestimated um, uh, the, the nature of the, of the virus. And so um, we did basically nothing uh, for a long time. Uh, the Chinese are the most mobile people in the world right now. And so uh, travel restrictions on China were not imposed until about February the 2nd. Uh, since January of that time, about 400,000 people, 430,000 people had traveled from uh, China to the United States. And um, we actually understand now that, uh, you know, New York being a very densely populated place where a lot of people travel, they move in and out. Uh, we know a lot of people who were actually infected uh, in Europe, uh, including Italy, uh, that now moved, shifted and be, had become the epicenter had actually traveled into the United States. And so uh, about 2 million people actually, uh, over the period that we placed the travel, uh, travel restriction, limited travel restrictions on China, had actually traveled from, the, from Europe and Italy into the United States, uh, especially uh, New York being a hub. New York is a financial capital of the uh, United States, with New York City uh, being the most densely populated place in, in, in America, about 8.4 million people. And uh, it's very congested, very congested. And um, okay. of course, that's how uh, the, 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 the virus, which is an insidious virus, which is what's difficult about it. You know, um, It's not like uh, diseases we've known in the past that, you know, they just manifest and they show their symptoms. Uh, some people may show symptoms or and it takes a, a while, gestation period, maybe 14 All right. days. Now, now, Olu, let, me, um, let me interject there a bit, Olu. Now, you are in New York, and in New York in particular, we are seeing what seems on the face of it to be like a tragedy playing out. However, you're in the midst of it. Is there another side to the story we're not seeing? The civil lining, perhaps? Well, um, as we said, well, the United States is now the epicenter of the coronavirus. We've had over 80,000 deaths um, since uh, in over two months. And um, New York, uh, you know, has had over 21,000 deaths. Um, you know, initially, um, New York had actually uh, experienced about a third of all the, the confirmed cases uh, in, in, in America and a third of the deaths as well. Now, uh, since the governor of New York actually uh, implemented uh, an executive order 
shot, basically shutting down New York. It was a uh, New York on pause, uh, you know, shutting down businesses. And New York actually basically became a ghost town. Uh, people have actually complied with these orders. And so we see that from going from being a third of all the uh, uh, infections, uh, the confirmed infections, and also the deaths, we've moved down to about a quarter. Uh, other states and regions in America are now gradually being impacted. And so um, we can see the curve. There was a spike around, um, there was a spike around uh, April, for early April and uh, April 24th. And we had a very large casualties. Uh, but now we're seeing that uh, the objective was to flatten the curve. And now we're seeing the flattening of the curve. Uh, you know, the coronavirus is an airborne disease. Uh, that's one of the things that makes it very difficult. We don't like to use that word uh, aerosol or airborne. Uh, you know, the virus stays in the air for three hours. All right. And, uh, now, all right. Um, finally, in spite of the numbers, are you beginning to see an end in sight for New York and by extension for America? And what does that finish line look like? Well, um, yes, um, the executive order shutting down businesses, you know, the New York basically looks like a ghost town now. Everybody's staying at home. New York is a very busy, it's a very uh, commercial area. Um, they're going to be lifting uh, the, the they'll, be, they'll be removing the lockdown in phases, in four phases. And uh, hopefully the first phase is going to start uh, on Friday. Uh, that's May the 15th. And so some businesses, including, you know, such as construction, you know, will see a lifting and they will have uh, practices in place and uh, precautionary procedure to make sure that there's no uh, second outbreak uh, so that, you know, social distancing and what have you, uh, you know, uh, uh, jobs. And then other sectors of the economy will start to, to come up. Uh, of course, you know, uh, New York, we've lost about $60 billion uh, in tax revenues by shutting down businesses. But, you know, the empathy of the, the governor, New Yorkers are, are empathetic and, uh, you know, we comply uh, with instructions because Americans have a stakeholder mentality. Uh, government in America is the government of the people, for the people, by the people. So uh, people take ownership and uh, so they've complied with these uh, with these. Uh, stay home orders uh, everybody wears masks now it's a law and so we can see that uh, indeed we will be able to manage it and gradually go back uh, to work uh, in time um, in terms of uh, seeing an end there's no end to this until there's a vaccine and um, of course a vaccine um, is not foreseeable until about a year uh, given the testing uh, procedures and reg regulations to actually get uh, vaccines to market oh, so right. All right, yeah, sure. we, we, we have to let you go now. We're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us all the way in New York and for your contribution on the news. Thank you for having me.